Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. Today I will be giving a talk on how the indie web can be used to fight against big tech. Uh, and the alternative title for this talk, which I do not usually use, is Privacy is Dead and We Killed It. But here's how we can revive it. Before starting with the talk, I'd like to start with the basics. So my name is Boris Budini. I'm a part of Open Labs Hackerspace, and I'm also part of Collective 68 and Cloud 68, which is a company that is part of the indie web movement. And I'm also part of Citizen App. However, the single most important fact about me, and I hope that this is something you remember even after my talk is over, is that I am a cat person. That over there is my cat. Her name is Top Cat. OK, well, enough about me. I would like to tell you a short story. So back in 1989, there was a really smart person named Tim Berners-Lee who was working on something that was revolutionary and that changed the way that we communicate. If you're not familiar with it, you might have heard of it in another term. It's called the World Wide Web, and it is what allows us to have this conference together even while the pandemic is still going on. Of course, at first, it was not as complex. It wasn't even as vital as it is today. But the way that it worked and the way that it still works is that you have powerful computers that run code somewhere far away from you and they take the output of this code and they serve it to you. That way you can use that software without having to buy very expensive computers. However, there was a problem because people started asking, well, these computers sure cost a lot. Who is going to pay for them? The developers could not afford them because the costs for running a site were inc increasing along with the traffic for that site. And it will not make a lot of sense to force your users to pay every time that they want to access a site. Imagine if you had to pay today for every search that you perform on the internet. So this more or less forced us toward a solution that we agreed that sites were going to be free to access, of course, granted that you had an internet connection, and the developers of these sites had to find a way to make money in some other way. This led them towards the path of advertisements. But here's the thing. The internet is far more complex than just your television because with the internet you have the right you have the way to deliver the right content to the right user and in terms of advertising this means that you can deliver the right ad to the right user so if you show me an ad for where i can buy some toys for my cat i am very likely to click on that ad and then purchase those toys and this is what people start to realize that if you could analyze your users, if you know what they like and what they don't like, you know what to show them. So you have a higher probability that they will click on your ads and that way you will make more money. However, when it comes to privacy implications, this was, and as a matter of fact, still is a huge abuse of our privacy. But do not worry, because just like any other story, it gets worse. We had national and international pressure, especially after attacks such as the one on 9-11, where the government started to get even more demanding towards tech companies. What they wanted was very simple in theory. They wanted to have access, unlimited access, to everybody's data. Now, this is very dangerous because, for example, when I have a problem and I need to find for a solution, what I do is I search that problem on the internet. So Google knows me way better 
than my friends do, or even better than I know myself. And now the governments want to have access to that information as well. The reason why they wanted to do this is because if you monitor every citizen of every country, you can, in theory, prevent terrorist attacks from happening. Certainly, this amazing power was not going to be abused in any way. Well, this amazing power was abused shortly after it was put into effect. Governmental agencies started to collect private information from every user. This was going on unnoticed until whistleblowers started to speak out. One very famous example of a whistleblower speaking against this is Snowden, who exposed everything that the National Security Agency of the United States was doing. And one of the most powerful examples of what they were doing is the PRISM program. So NSA was in collaboration with developers of big platforms. For example, they were in collaboration with Google and Facebook, and they were gathering more data from us. Of course, the list of companies that participated in the PRISM program is bigger than the one I mentioned, but the most important ones were Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, and Amazon. If you take a moment to think about it, that's mostly what we do on the internet. Let's recap, let's analyze where we are right now. So on one hand, we have software development companies that develop big platforms and they analyze our data in order to sell it for profit. And on the other hand, you have governmental agencies collecting the same data in order to theoretically prevent prevent terrorist attacks from taking place. On the first view, this might seem very depressing and you might feel like giving up because, well, they already have the data. What's the point in fighting? Well, I disagree. And a lot of other people disagreed with that notion as well. And they started to fight what was happening. On one hand, you had communities like FLOSK in Kosovo and Open Labs Hackerspace in Albania that fight for change on a policy making level. And on the other hand, you have open source software developers that create platforms to provide an alternative for these platforms that we are already using, like Google Drive, Dropbox, Slack, and so on. So the basic idea, if you want to break free, from the reach of big tech is you have to install a server and then you have to maintain it. You have to perform updates, monitor the server, the service, and you have to protect yourself against cybernetic attacks towards that server. Well, this for some people, this might not be fun, but more importantly, it might not be easy because not everyone is tech literate and you cannot force them to learn how they should manage a server. For example, my mom constantly messages me private stuff. For example, what's going on with my family. However, she does this using Instagram comments. If only there was a way where she could have her privacy without having to learn all those technical stuff. Well, the good news is that there is and it's called the Indie Web Movement. It, indie Web Movement is the next step on the fight towards privacy invasions. It's a way to break free from the reach of all of these companies and without having to learn anything to do with servers. What Indie Web does, what Indie Web providers do, is that they install open source platforms developed by open source developers. And these platforms behave transparently because you can look into how the platform works and you can judge for yourself. They take care of your infrastructure without you having to worry about your infrastructure. In practice, all you have to do is use it. So you might be asking why join the Indie Web? Well, the Indie Web is not only powerful in terms of technical capabilities, 
but it's also diverse because since the open source community itself is so large, the odds of you finding a platform that is a open source version of another proprietary platform you're using, it, you are very likely to find that open source version. And since everything is open, it is transparent and you can take a look into it yourself. If there's something that doesn't work the way you like, you can change it. So if you want to start to learn more about this, there are a couple of indie web hosters I mentioned here, such as Indie Hosters and Steam Prisa, but you have many more. So if you do want to take a look, please feel free to visit ibraho.st. Now, is this the solution? Well, I don't think so. In a perfect world, you would have everyone be tech literate so that everyone could be managing their servers. But in practice, this is kind of hard to achieve at the moment. And until then, we have to find other ways of fighting mass surveillance. So this was my talk. If you have any question, do feel free to reach out to me and let me know if there is anything else you would like to know more about. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your talk again. It was quite an informative one. Uh, we heard you talking about this topic and uh, do you think that we as open source communities are doing enough to aware people about these, if I may call it, big data that gets stolen? So I think that the open source community in general has been doing a good job of informing the public about the dangers of big tech. However, I feel like there is a lot more we can do to improve to proceed to the next step because if your users are informed but they don't really have an alternative, then there is not much that your users can do. So how does uh, IndieWeb promote itself? So as of right now, the entire IndieWeb movement is relatively quite new. Um, the major part of promoting ourselves has been through conferences. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Thank you, Boris, for your words and thank you for the talk. How does IndieWeb promote itself? Uh, so this was the last talk and uh, this is the end of the Software Freedom Kosovo Conference. This year it was a little bit different because of the situation with the pandemic, but we hope you enjoyed it just as much as we did. And this kind of helped us to use our free software and our free open source uh, tech and even promote it more and users and people who wanted to follow the conference could use them too. Uh, I just want to thank all the people who followed us, uh, the organizers and everyone who made it possible. And I want to also thank the uh, speakers for giving us such a rich, attractive and diverse content. For other uh, viewers who want to follow the talks, we will announce them soon. And we hope to see you in the Software Freedom Kosovo 2021 here. Thanks a lot and have a great year. Bye.